Hello and welcome to my tutorial for the Corgi engine. So first of all, what is the Corgi engine? It's an engine on top of Unity where you have everything what you need to start and build your first two and a half or 2D platformer game. Well, not even your first, it, it's, it's just very handy because you have a lot of abilities just out of the box. So the asset itself you can find on the asset store. It costs around 60 bucks, more or less, depending if it's on sale or not. And again, it has everything what you need to create a 2D, 2.5D platformer. So let's go here to the Corgi engine moremountains.com and here you can see a little bit more in detail what this asset contains so before you buy it maybe go in here and see the things that he's providing you so you can walk i mean you can run you can dash you can jetpack you can do melee attacks push and pull objects so it's it's a lot of abilities which are in this engine So the next question is, is for who is this tutorial? This tutorial is really meant for the people who are just starting with Unity and wanted to buy this Corgi engine in order to create their 2D platformer game. Because I would like to make a pixel art game with tile maps and I will go through without explaining too much in detail why things are like they are in there. Because when I started with it some months ago, I must confess it was a little bit too much for me. And I didn't found any tutorial for an absolute beginner. If you go here to the Corgi engine uh, page and you go to the documentation then you see they have everything in here so everything how to import how to install then uh, how to deal with the minimal seam requirement and also with weapons with with, with everything so they have a very good documentation but if you're a beginner and you can barely navigate with uh, Unity, then you will find those um, tutorials just not enough. So I will try to do everything from scratch without leaving one step and creating the game from start to finish. So now here we are in Unity. I have already downloaded the two assets that we will use for this uh, project. So how did I do that? I went here into Windows and the Package Manager. I assume you have already buy those two, else you should go to the Asset Store and uh, buy them. So here when you have the Corgi Engine and you have not downloaded it already, then you will get here a download button. Click on the download button so that you have it locally and then you can import it. That will take some time and you will also get some um, pop-up windows asking you if you need to uh, import and refresh or something like that. Just say yes to everything and then you will get your asset. Uh, the same here for Sunnyland. So now that you have downloaded the assets, you will see them now in here. You have uh, the Corgi engine and Sunnyland. The Corgi engine has three different folders and the main folder which contains also the license and the readme file. Uh, you should definitely take a look, a look into the readme and the license file because uh, there are very cool things in here which I did not realize at the beginning. 
what the license says is that sadly the music that is included in the games are not uh, for you to use but everything else like the effects and the um, sprites and art that is used you can just use it also so that comes with the price and the other good thing is if you go in here into the readme files it even lets you know where the effects uh, are coming so you have here the freesound.org or noiseforfun.com so that, that gives you additional knowledge where to get some uh, little assets for yourself or for your game that, that's very cool so here we have the first folder which we want to take a look into that's the common folder this is the folder where all the magic happens. Here are the prefabs and the scripts and everything that you need in order to get the Corgi engine running. And there are also some little things that additional things that you can have, but we will in this tutorial cover definitely the prefabs and maybe we'll get into one script. So the second folder in here is the demos and the demos is a little treasure for the beginner. So why is that? So it's just because if you are starting to do your first um, game, you will suddenly find out, well, I would like to have my enemies flying or I would like that he's uh, doing this or my player has a jetpack and so on. So uh, how do you deal with that? So you can go to the internet and go to the documentation or, and I would say, and or is uh, to go into here and check what you would like to do. So I personally, my favorite one is the minimal one because here you have dedicated themes for what you would like to do. So if you want to do a game with uh, some special gravity, you can go in here or what we will do at the beginning is a minimal level. So when you double click on a minimal level, he will open and you will see what's happening in here. It's a very simple level in where you have some platforms. So each one of those platforms is represented by that one and you can well you can actually take this minimal level you can copy and start from there delete all those uh, sprites that you have in here and build your own thing that's one way you how you could do it uh, how you could do it with the corgi engine and uh, what we want to achieve today is i would like to have a tile based game so this is something like the retro AI not so fancy like that one but some something like a level like that so you see there is a background you have here some tile um, you have here some tiles which you have uh, designed your level in you have some enemy which uh, have some different behaviors uh, again if you would like to have your game like that you can just Control D that thing, copy it to your own scenes and tweak around until it works like you like you wish to have it. Definitely a useful folder. And now on the third folder, the third party one, we have some um, uh, some nice surprises in there because when you buy the Corgi engine, you also get some other tools from uh, or assets from more mountains like the mm tools the mm feedbacks the inventory engine the nice touch and the mm interface so um, i think the most important ones is the inventory engine which is something like a zelda like inventory system that you have so when you played i don't know a uh, link to the past you have some inventories in there and you can add that into your games and another one which I think it's uh, very handy and you will use that definitely in my 
tutorial are the MN feedbacks. So that gives you some effects when you are playing.